pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Saul Ion. Here. We're hearing an echo. Sorry about that. I'm a newbie. <laughs> Try again. Okay. Mr. Saul Ayong. Present. Caleb Brock. Present. Skip Gorman. Yes. Here. Skip. I'm here. I see you're Can online, you but we can't hear you. Oh, my. I'm... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm unsure what to do under these circumstances. Yeah. Well, really. I, 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 How's sure. that, Skip? Going <laughs> <laughs> a lot smoother. <laughs> David Couch. Here. John Crump. Here. Pete Espinoza. Here. Jeff Flores. Here. Rick Franz. Here. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Orshel Cryer. Here. Cindy Parra. I'm here. Susanna Reyes. Here. Gilberto Reyna. I'm here. Bob Smith. I'm here. Phil Smith. Here. Veronica Vasquez. Malcolm Morney. Here. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the council at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Scene one. Oh, God. <laughs> now I'm nervous. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Jay. I'm with Bike Bakersfield. Uh, I just want to give you guys a little update on what's been going on, what we've been doing in the community. Um, on July 12th, uh, the Kern Act Transportation Alliance attended the grand opening of the George and Derek. George and Darylene Randall Skate Park over in Lake Sabella with the help of Officer Martinez and CHP. We were able to host a really big bike rodeo and a helmet giveaway for the community. It was a huge turnout. I think they had honestly half of Bodfish and the majority of Lake Sabella out there. Um, on July 13th, we also hosted a bike rodeo and partners uh, with the Discovery Church um, out in Cottonwood. It was a really good turnout. Unfortunately, no one wanted to ride bikes because it was like 112, but the water slide, the kids had a blast. Mm -hmm. Uh, on July 31st, uh, CATA will be attending the Lost Hills Back to School event, performing e-bike maintenance clinics um, for the Back to School event. Uh, we're continuing to find other activities to make up for the community rides we have missed at the end of the year. Um, the Back to School events have been a really big help with us being able to do that. That's thank, really about it. Thank you, Jay. Yep. Appreciate the work. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Seeing none. Mayor Ion, did you want to go now or wait till later? Mr. Ion, Mayor of McFarland, would like to make a presentation. Good 
yeah, I guess we'll we'll uh, we'll discuss the presentation after this. Or, you know, usually politicians like to tell you things and not show you, but I'm I'm different. I'll I'll, I'll tell you about it, then I'll show you. So I just don't know which one would be the best to to tell you the story. But uh, good evening, everyone. Before we dive into the celebration of our achievements, it's important to reflect on the journey that we brought us here. Prior to this pro uh, project in McFarland, this uh, area where, where I'm gonna show you when the presentation comes up, was one of the worst areas in McFarland. I mean, grow as my, for myself, growing up two streets away, that walking bridge, that corridor, uh, it led to the, the local bars and it was just a bad area where uh, sexual assaults, fights, homicides, uh, happened. Um, so those conditions were dire. So today I stand before you with immense pride and gratitude as we gather to recognize a remarkable transformation of this area. On behalf of the city of McFarland, I'm deeply honored to accept this prestigious award from Caltrans and the Western Association of the State Transportation Officials. The McFarland Community Trail Garden Project is a testament to what can be accomplished when state agencies, local government, and community organizations come together with a shared vision. This transfer transformation of a three acre parcel adjacent to State 99 into the McFarland Community Trail Garden is more than just an infrastructure project. It represents a commitment to enhancing the quality of life for our residents, fostering community bonds and providing a safe and beautiful space for everyone to enjoy. Um, one of the most cherished elements of this project was the community garden, obviously, uh, which became vibrant and uh, a space thanks to the tireless efforts of this group, uh, they're called Mujeres Activas. I'm gonna translate it, it's called uh, Active Women of McFarland, though uh, their president is a man, but hey, we'll, take it. <laughs> we'll take it as it is, right? And he's not here today, he had to work. So um, uh, prior to this, uh, uh, six months ago, I'll just, I'm gonna give a, a brief little story on this. Uh, six months ago, uh, some, uh, some of the ladies are somehow related to me, I, I baptized their kids, and they, they, they made some comments about me saying that I'm very direct and uh, not very approachable. Come on, look at me, look at his face, <laughs> right? So I, I said, let, let, I'll, I'll meet with this group. Let's, let's meet, we met, we broke bread, we talked about that. What do you guys want from our community? And they're like, we just wanna be involved. And so hence to uh, this project that the, the state and we got two different grants awarded. And I'm like, well, everybody knows the difficulties McFarland has as far as the revenue and the resources. And I'm like, how are we gonna maintain this? And so I spoke to the ladies and I said, hey, would you guys like to help the community in the city? And they're like, yeah. I said, do you guys wanna, uh, you want some plots? And they're like, yeah, how much are you gonna charge us? I said, nothing. <laughs> I said, you maintain it, you manage it, here you go. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm gonna show you the pictures of what it was before and what it is today. It's, uh, so I try to take every elected official there that comes to our city and says, look, when we secure funds and we get uh, grants, we get the job done. So, but just to go back to this, um, this group, right? Uh, tirelessly, tirelessly, they've been working, planting vegetables. They're actually gonna try to have their first function for the kids, a pumpkin patch in October. And then uh, their husbands, which they don't get a lot of credit, are doing all the labor. They're the ones planning. But I, let me let me rephrase that. They're all doing it together. How about that? Right? I don't want to get out of it. Somebody's <laughs> got to give direction. Yeah, yeah. So th this <laughs> uh, their hard work and determination has not only beautified the garden, but also fostered a strong sense of community ownership and involvement. Uh, the community garden now serves as a vital gathering space, especially for those who might not have such a space at home to plant vegetables because of housing restrictions and living in apartments. So th this is allows them to go and get out and, and uh, plant some vegetables and flowers. So it's a place where people can meet, share, and grow together. This pride and joy, this garden brings a community to it, immeasurable, immeasurable. And we owe a great deal of gratitude to the Mujeres Activas for their commitment. This project along with others we, we uh, accomplished recently stands as a testament to our capability to deliver and execute when funds are awarded to McFarland. The support from California Urban Greening Grant and California and Clean California Local Grant Program has been instrumental to making this vision a reality. This, their invest, investment in our community is a shining example of how funding can drive a meaningful change. And so in closing, I would like to express 
my deepest gratitude to our partners, including Caltrans, uh, the Clean Cl uh, California Initiative, Mujeres Activas, and every community member who contributed to this project. To, together we created something truly special that will benefit the city of McFarland for generations to come. Uh, we got an award for the, for the city and then also for them. So I'll, I'll be having the city manager come up and receive this award. So if you want to start the presentation, I, I'll give an overview. Should I, I'm losing my sight. So the introduction is uh, we, we received a $2.5 million uh, project. The city ended up, okay, well, well, I'll get to that. So west of Industrial Street, east of high, uh, Highway 99, we planted 50 garden plots. Uh, a trail for pedestrians and cyclists. Now, I don't want to jinx anything. For people that enjoy cyclists, cycling, <laughs> we have, it. it's about a quarter mile of a walking trail. So we're potentially trying to get a funding to wrap around all the way around on the east side, the disadvantaged community for uh, cyclists and a walking trail that connects to Blanco Park, uh, Brownie Road Park, so everybody has, you know, different avenues. And I'll show you the, I'll show you where we're at, but I don't want to jinx anything. So it's a trail for pedestrians and cyclists. It's picnic tables, small amphitheater, restroom facilities, and basketball court. Now, when I say city funds were, uh, were paid for this and everybody knows our lack of resources, for some reason, city staffer, she must have loved basketball or he loved basketball. They wanted a basketball court there. And I was like, how are we going to pay for this? It wasn't part of the guidelines, but it's there. So what can we do, right? So uh, I'll just leave with that. So uh, 1.8 million came from urban, urban greening, 490,000 came from Clean California, 300K came from the uh, city budget. You know, hopefully we could get, you know, somebody like the Golden State Warriors to come and refund us back. I'm not gonna say Lakers, but anyway, so it's a total of 2.5 million. And here's the site, it's an, uh, where the red dot obviously, and we'll get a little better picture. So before, what I was talking about, that area, there was a potato warehouse and it was something to do with roses and it was actually like a, where the criminal activity was going on, where people would go do drugs. And then that trail would lead to the pedestrian walking bridge where everybody knew that if you want to get in a fight, you went to the walking bridge because the police wouldn't even show up there. So, but it, it was very dangerous. You wouldn't walk at night and you wouldn't even take a shot to walk in them. And that was only pedestrian what we have in the city of McFarland. And then this was what, obviously when the potato, uh, when the city had it and the, the, the warehouse was uh, taken out. So it was just land before, and then uh, before you, 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 it's just the same area. And this is where we're looking at as an aerial shot. If, if those that need a, okay. This is a little closer currently. So we got pumpkins, tomatoes, yeah, watermelons, it, all the plots are, I mean, these ladies have, these, this group has done a fantastic job. This is a video and it shows where we have that trail alongside. Um, oh, can you pause it right there real quick? Uh, you see how we, uh, can you pause it? Please? <laughs> Just a little shout out, you know, um, where we have that trail, you see how it's real clean. And then we have the we have the railroads. Is there any way Caltrans could help us out to get the railroads to clean that area? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. So, because there's a lot of tumbleweeds, you know, right now. So, thank you, Caleb. So, uh, and there's the basketball court. If you, I'm sorry. Well, with that, I'm, uh, let me see. Um, I think we... The uh, technology is working, then you had to interrupt it. You pushed I your know, luck my there. <laughs> I know. I just needed that. I should have told Caltrans on the side, but <laughs> you're right, Bob. I'm, <laughs> Sorry, Ted. Okay, uh, we'll just continue on. I know there's a uh, these ladies will work, uh, you know, work. Then they might be tired from the from the road. But thanks, thanks to everybody. I, I wanna obviously I'm not gonna accept the award for the city of McFarland. 
I want to have our city manager come up and receive this award, and he has a couple words to say. So. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, and um, it's, it's an honor to receive such a prestigious award and to be selected top 10 in, in the region. Um, city of McFarland, oh, I should introduce myself. My name is Diego Vermontes. I'm the city manager with the city of McFarland. I also serve as the finance director for the city. Um, but for, for a, such a disadvantaged community, and specifically the location of this project, it's truly transformative. Um, as the mayor said, there's not much more to add to, to what he said. Um, as far as the impact of this project, but given the location and what it was before, um, not the safest of er areas to, to what it is now. And if you go out there, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, just seeing the activity out there, folks using the, the actual pedestrian uh, trail and, and all the, the gardening that's happening and, and as well as that basketball court as much as the mayor loves it, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, an, it's put to very good use. So... Um, once again, we, we thank you for, for this award. Um, and, and as the mayor said, if we're awarded funds, uh, we deliver. And this is just one of, one of many projects we hope to deliver on. So thank you all. And, and also, as the mayor kind of, um, kind of set the stage for uh, uh, the Mujeres Activas, who were pivotal in, um, well, the city completed this project, but the project itself, the, the project completion itself is not enough. It's what do we do with it and what community benefit does it have? And these ladies brought the project to life, uh, the Mujeres Activas. They've, um, they've uh, made sure to, to ensure that, that every plot is, is fully, um, fully planted. And um, I'd like to introduce uh, one of the gals, uh, Araceli Jacinto, who'd like to say a few words on behalf of, uh, of, of the Mujeres Activas. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Erika Magallanes. Nosotros somos un pequeño grupo de mujeres voluntarias y activas en la comunidad de McFarland. Ayudamos a otras organizaciones en sus eventos y decidimos formar nuestra propia organización. El nombre de nuestra organización es Mujeres Activas Líderes Comunitarias. Gracias al alcalde Saúl Layón de la ciudad de McFarland por darnos su confianza y apoyo para ayudar a crear un ambiente positivo y a, sus, y a su vez ayudar en el crecimiento y necesidades en la ciudad. Estamos muy emocionados y listas para empezar a traer nuevos proyectos para la comunidad que vendrán al futuro. Muchas gracias. So now the translation. We're a small group of volunteer women that are active in the community of McFarland. We help other organizations with their events and have decided to form our own organization, whose name is Active Women Community Leaders. Thank you to the McFarland Mayor Saul Ayon for giving us the confidence and support to develop a positive space and to help in the development of the city and with the needs of the city. We are passionate and ready to start new future projects in the community. Thank you. And we hold the mic. Ha! You don't know what that is. <laughs> I fight it all the time. So, in recognition of your efforts in transforming and maintaining this, uh, the city of McFarland Community Garden, your dedication has turned once a neglected area into a vibrant, flourishing space that serves as a sanctuary for community members to gather, grow, and thrive together. Your hard work and commitment has only beautified the garden, but also fostered a strong sense of community ownership and involvement, making a lasting impact on the lives of our residents. Thank you for the remarkable contributions and for being the positive change in the city of McFarland. Mujeres activas, líderes comentarias. So I try not to chop that up, but thank you very much from, from the city. Thank you so much for a round of applause. And uh, quien quiere uh, venir a recibir esto, uh, el, el certificado. So, so. Okay. 
Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Board, for allowing me to speak. Um, uh, our district supervisor, I think, has some. Go ahead. I have a question, real quick. Sure. Uh, Mayor Ione, um, actually, on Saturday, Bike Bakersfield will be in McFarland to do one of their community rides. We would love to connect with this group and maybe pivot and the area that we're doing the ride in. Maybe this is the area where we need to to uh, move our um, community ride to. And if you could later give me the connection or somebody, we will be there. I'm not sure what time it is. I think it's in here somewhere, but um, Saturday morning we'll be out there for our community ride. Absolutely, let me uh, translate tra okay. translate that real quick. Uh, well, I'll let them know, how about that? <laughs> I don't wanna chop it up. So, may I sure. just take a, a second? Um, I wanna congratulate you and I wanna thank you all for being here and for your hard work on, on this project. And I want to um, support these two because I've gotten to know both of those gentlemen and the other members of your council in the last few years. And they have the best interests of the community of McFarland at heart. And they work hard for you every day. Trust me, I hear from the guy in the blue shirt right there a lot about <laughs> what he's working on. And uh, he's kind of like the, you guys remember the, you're not old enough. Do you remember the Energi Energizer Bunny that never stops? That, that's him. So congratulations. That's a great project. And I'm, I know there are other things that we're working on, but uh, I bet you get some awards for those too. So good job. Thank you, DC. You I bet. appreciate it. Thank you. you want to, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, para las mujeres que asistieron hola en la audiencia, el supervisor quería agradecerles mucho al apoyo que ha recibido del alcalde, igual como el administrador de la ciudad, igual como usted, su grupo, y está bien orgulloso de todo lo que han hecho. Y espera también él igual estar parte de los proyectos que vienen en el futuro. Aquí tenemos en el um, concilio de directores, también tenemos un evento que es de bicicletas. Hay un evento que va a haber en McFarland y lo que estaba diciendo a uh, la señora Para es que también podemos hacer que ustedes, por favor, inviten a su comunidad que vengan al evento y si es posible, a lo mejor movemos el evento allí mismo donde estaba el proyecto que presentó el alcalde, pero por favor, corran la voz que venga gente al evento. Y aquí hay a volantes, donde dice, va a ser. ¿Qué dijiste? Si quieres saber cómo Yeah, someone is. Aquí está el volante y dice que el siguiente evento es en la biblioteca de McFarland de 11 de la mañana a 12 de la mañana y va a ser este mismo sábado. There's somebody that needs, wants to say something. It's an alert, Amber Alert. Yeah, it's an Amber Alert. This will be an important day for you adults. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Chair, and thanks, uh, Karen Garp, for that, that award. Uh, one last thing, it's it's a whole team effort. Uh, we, you surround yourself with good people that care about your community. You get a lot of things accomplished. I know we're, we're, we're headed in the right direction. The future is bright. So thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. And congratulations. <laughs> I just want to commend the young, the, all these young ladies for what they're doing. It's awesome what they're doing. And I want to commend you because this is something that I think I envision for the city of Varvin as well, because it's also, um, you know, a low income community that it's very, it's, it's a very, it's a community that I guess I would say is a disparity in much disparity right now. So I really commend you. And I would like to know whenever you have time, you know, if we could connect to have our, also our city manager and our mayor go out and, you know, tour the, your facility. Absolutely, I just, I just uh, did an open invitation for the Delano City Council as well. So okay. uh, we're available anytime. Got it. Thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you everyone. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Make sure we get you on camera. Um, hi, my name is Beatriz Barron. I have been living in the community of McFarland for 16 years. Um, I usually am from Salinas, but since I moved here, I like it because it's very, um, a very area comfortable, uh, no violence. Um, I love my community, and I want to thank you, everyone, for um, giving us the opportunity to help each other, and we want to do the best to help in our community, and we're willing to work so hard. And thanks to the city of McFarland for the work that we got. We really appreciate it, and we look forward to work hard with you guys. Thank you very much, and we would like to work very, very hard to help the best we can, and we're always here to help each other. Thank so you. Thank you very much, everyone, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, nothing nothing works when a community uh, isn't involved. And when the community is involved like this, things happen. And it's uh, great to see. So appreciate it. Uh, while we're doing presentations, I have a presentation here for a certificate of appreciation to Benjamin Raymond for 15 years of dedicated service to Kern Council of Governments. Uh, July of 2009. Thank you, Benjamin. Appreciate it. 15 years. Don't see very often these days. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the council or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the council concerning the item before action is taken. Any member of the council <laughs> wish to remove Consent agenda item. Any public wish to remove an item? Seeing none, and I have a motion. Motion to consent. Second. Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Brock. Aye. Gorman. Aye. Skip Gorman. Oh, aye. Thank you. Yes. David Couch. Yes. Crump. Yes. Espinoza. Yes. Flores. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Oh, Franz. Yes. Rick, try that again. Let's see. Rick Franz. Yes. Can you hear me? Cryer? Para? Yes. Reyes? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you can fix that. Thank you. Reyna? Yes. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. And Malcolm Warney? <coughs> yes. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Chairman, do you want uh, Caltrans to uh, have an opportunity to talk? <laughs> oh, okay. Did I miss? I missed something. <laughs> Caltrans. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board. Um, yeah, we uh, want to extend congratulations to the city of McFarland and Kern County and all of those uh, involved. And just want to give a little bit of context to the, the award. I know it's big for McFarland, big for the county, big for Kern Cog. Um, but this project was selected as a winner of the Washto Regional Project Award and part of the 2024 
America's Transportation Award competition. This project is one of 10 projects selected from state departments of transportation from California, Arizona, Utah, Washington State, Nebraska, South Dakota, Oregon, North Dakota, and Texas. Nexus project will move on to the nationwide phase of awards, which will be announced in September, where the top nationwide contenders will compete for two of the 2024 American Transportation uh, Awards national prizes. So, big deal. So, very good. Very exciting. All right, so on to uh, the, the Caltrans report. So the first item is your strategic management plan update, uh, which will be updated at the end of this month for the 2024-2028 uh, fiscal years. And we've come up with a new vision and mission. The vision is a thriving and connected California. And the new mission is improving lives and communities through transportation. A couple of uh, NOFO, notice of funding opportunity, discretionary grant programs. So the first one is the NOFO was released for fiscal year 24-26 funding. There's approximately $607 million muted. available for capital and community planning. I'm muted. Applications are due September 30th. And if you need a letter of support uh, from Caltrans, those are due by August 2nd. ATP cycle seven, uh, those applications were due in June and the successful applications are expected to be announced in November or December. Next is the sustainable transportation planning grants. So uh, just recently the 24-25 awards were announced and of the 15 grants that were submitted within the Caltrans six region, 12 were awarded. Uh, Kern Cog was awarded one um, for just over $1 million. And then also uh, Tulare Council Associated Senior Governments submitted one on behalf of all of the Valley MPOs. And that's a Valley Transport Re Resiliency Advancement for Neighborhood Sustainable Freight Movement Study, uh, which was $3 million. Uh, so we're really looking forward to that. Um, Overall in District 6, we got just over $8.4 million in total funding, which was 16% of the statewide pot. So we we're only second behind District 4, which is the Bay Area. So we're very pleased with, with the success. Um, the next cycle um, will we'll start this fall. And uh, District 6, we hold annual uh, hybrid workshops to go over the grant guide and to encourage uh, local cities and, and the counties to apply. So um, now that we've been kind of picking up steam in the district, we're really gonna be making uh, specific efforts to reach out to all of the cities and counties, especially those that haven't applied in the past to try to gain interest uh, and get, get, get more of these planning grants to, uh, to the rest of our communities. Next is the HSIP cycle 12. Uh, those applications are due September 9th with an estimated $300 million available. SB1 TCEP SCCP cycle four. So we're preparing for the upcoming cycle. Uh, one of the projects that uh, we're applying for is the State Route 9958 uh, ramp connector. The call for projects is expected mid-August. Applications will be due November 22nd with an expected $800 million available for that fund. Uh, lastly, the State Route 99 uh, Comprehensive Multimodal Corridor Plan. So we just finished the initial round of virtual public engagement workshops. Uh, there was a total of eight workshops that we held. Those are recorded. Uh, links for the recording uh, for the videos uh, and other informational videos are currently on YouTube. And we're in the process of developing a, a 99 website, which will also house all of those uh, virtual meetings. Um, the second round of virtual meetings will follow in a later part of this year. And Michael will update you as those dates uh, become available. Uh, so I'll pause right there and see if there's any questions before I get into the specific project report. Caleb, a question on this 607 million September 30th deadline funding. What's the name of it? Could you repeat it? 
607. So that's uh, the NOFO Notice of Funding Opportunity, which is the capital and community planning. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I follow up on that? So yes. what can that funding be used for? Um, so I'm not the investment planning expert, okay. um, but I, I believe it's like is it only it, for planning or capital. It? it says capital <laughs> okay. construction and community planning. So it's pretty broad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Move on to the specific, the project specific reports. So first one is state route 43 and state route 46 intersection improvements. Project is currently in design phase and anticipated to begin construction spring of 2025. Next is the old 99 and White Lane State Route 99 rehabilitation project. Work is about 98% complete. Project is in the punch list phase of construction, which includes signage, plant establishment, and electrical work. And the plant establishment is in progress and is estimated to be completed in March of 2025. Next is the Delano State Route 155 Rehab 3R project. And this is gonna be rehabbing the pavement, pavement, paving shoulders, standard curb, gutter, and sidewalks with class two bike lanes within the whole project limits. Railroad work will include a cantilever structure, lighting and sidewalks at the tracks to meet UPRR requirements. The project will be co combined with the city's intersection improvement at State Route 155 and Lexington Street. Lexington, St Lexington Street intersection improvements will include dedicated left turn lanes on State Route 155 to address safety concerns. And the uh, ready to list date is gonna be June, 2025. Uh, still needs CNM agreements with UPRR, which is anticipated to be in 2025. And the project is set to advertise fall of 2025. Next is the State Route 43 Santa Fe roundabout. It's currently in PS and E phase. Tar target design completion is uh, December of 24. Project requires permits from the Federal Lands Bureau of Reclamation as an anticipated to be delayed and then going into construction spring of 2026. Next is the State Route 46 Gap Closure Segment 4C. Construction is in progress, 80% uh, complete. The contractor is completing HMA paving then the remaining work includes uh, signage, fiber rolls, hydro seed, fencing, and striping. The ribbon cutting for the project is tentatively scheduled for August 26th at 9 a.m. Next is the California Aqueduct 166 Bridge, bridge Rehabilitation. Uh, awarding a contract and approval in August of this year there will be about nine months delayed start as contractor pursues encroachment permits with the Department of Water Resources. So we're looking at an approximate May 2025 start date uh, and finish by the end of that calendar year. Next is the Maricopa Highway Cap M project. So the road closure will begin at the end of July, beginning of August. The closures will be four weekends 72 hour full closures at the culvert locations and the intersections of state route 166 and basic school road and they will likely be consecutive weekends once they begin next is the pumpkin center 3r rehab this project is currently in psnae phase and right away the ready to list target date will be august of 2024 Next is the Morning Drive 3R, 3R Rehab. We are about approximately 43% done, 53 working days into the 135 day contract. The completion date is anticipated to be October 3rd. Next is the Weed, Weed Patch Highway 3R Rehab. The project is currently in PSNE and right away phase and expected to RTL in November. Next is the Arvin Cap M. 
PA and ED was completed in May. PS and ED and right away COS allocation request submitted for the August CTC meeting. It's anticipated to begin design in this summer. RTL is summer 2025 and will advertise fall of 2025. I also have a note here uh, about the Arvin Clean California. The uh, contractor is currently working on phase two of the CCO work and will have some final items after that. Project completion and tree planting is anticipated to be late August, early September. And lastly is the Kern 33 uh, post mile 40.4 to 59.3. The target award uh, is the end of July. Target construction is in August and total estimating working days are 200 with a target construction completion by May of 2026. And I'm happy to take any questions or comments back to Michael at this time. Any questions or comments for District 6? California for Arvin. It seems like it keeps on delaying, delaying, delaying. And if there's any way that Michael could get back to me and let me know like what actually is the problem. Absolutely, yes, I will. Then maybe I'm not too sure if this is like the platform or the time, but maybe if Caltrans could kind of revisit the agreement they have with Arvin as far as make the maintenance for 123. 3.4, sorry. Because the agreement I have in here, and I have a copy and it's very antiquated, it's 1986. Okay, I will take that back and get back to you. Yes, thank you for providing that information. Thank you, anything else? Thank you very much. District nine. Okay, can you hear me? Technical difficulties, we'll, we'll have that report emailed out to you, the okay. District 9. Thank you, Executive Director report. Then. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, Chairman Smith and I attended the uh, CTC meeting in Monterey on June 27th and 28th. Got a feel for um, what's gonna happen here in October. And as a reminder, the CTC will be here October 16th, 17th, and 18th. Their formal meeting will take place on the 17th and 18th. Um, next month on August 15th and 16th, the CTC will meet in San Diego. We will have staff members at that meeting and we do have items on that uh, agenda. The, Octo the October 17th Kern Cog board meeting will be dark for sure because that uh, coincides with the CTC meeting. We are likely to be dark next month also, uh, but that's not as firm as October yet. We'll let you know within the next uh, few weeks whether we're gonna be dark in October. Over the last month- August. I've what was that, Mr. Chairman? You, you said October again. Oh, I'm sorry. August, right? August, so August, we're likely to be dark. For sure, we're gonna be dark in October. We'll let you know in the next month whether we're gonna be dark for sure next month. We are gonna meet in September though. Over the last last month, we've continued to um, participate in meetings. Just today, I had a meeting on State Route 46. As Caleb mentioned, um, the ribbon cutting is coming up on the last section of widening 46 in Kern County, and that's um, August 26th, 9 a.m. Uh, for those of you who've been around for a while, like Supervisor Couch and um, Council Member Smith, that process started um, almost exactly 25 years ago when the Waski family was in that horrific fatal accident. And that was July 4th weekend in 1999. So it's been a 25-year journey. and. Uh, can you make sure that they're invited? Yes. Yes, Supervisor. And and any of you and any members of the public or other elected officials are, are welcome welcome to come. It's a unfortunately it took twenty five years, but it's a, a huge accomplishment that many
dozens and dozens of miles, and they're still working on the San Luis Obispo side. Um, along with uh, the regular meetings I attend every month, that's all I have on, on this agenda, Mr. Chairman, subject to any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, we will adjourn that meeting and open the Kern Council of Governments meeting. Sure, we'll take a break, and if the public wishes to leave, now would be a good time. <laughs> Thank you. Kern Council of Governments, same roll call? Yes, sir, same. Thank you. Public comments. Do we have any public comments for the Kern Council of Governments? Seeing none, move to the consent agenda. Any public comments for the consent agenda? Wait, 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 wait. There's a comment. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Asha. I am Asha Chandy. I'm a board member. I'm here as a board member with Bike Bakersfield. I wanted to thank the TPPC and the TTAC and of course the board itself for approving, reopening a cycle of TDA grant funds um, specifically for bike education programs. Um, bike Bakersfield is excited to be working with the county and other agencies in on this board to just spread the word about bike safety programs using local dollars, you know, with local support. So please reach out to us if you'd like to have, um, you know, we do kids bike repairs, bike rides all over the community, um, e-bike repair and education programs. So please hit us up, let us know if you'd like us to come out to your community um, for TDA grant fund, fund programs. Thanks. Thank you. Any member of the council wish to pull a consent agenda? Seeing none, may I have a motion, Mr. Smith? Second. Thank you. Roll call vote, please. I own. Aye. Gorman? Uh, yes, still here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Couch? Yes. Crump? Yes. Espinoza? Yes. Flores? Yes. Cryer? Yes. Reyes? Yes. Reyna? Yes. Bob Smith? Yes. Phil Smith? Yes. That's it. Thank you. Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. In your folder this evening. It's a timeline covering July through October. Last month I went over um, the May report. This is the report for all the uh, COGS in the state. Currently, Kern is at 103% delivery of our federal funds. This is what I talk to you about several times a year. Your staff is doing a great job. I continue to, to push them. However, I want to be at 200 or 250%. We're in second place statewide, so great job. Uh, interesting article. I also uh, print, had printed out and put in your folders about um, the environmental activism that's um, starting, not starting, but has uh, over the last year or two has surfaced around uh, opposition to what I call routine roadway projects. It's very interesting read. Uh, the congressionally designated spending I told you about last month, we have confirmation from our three members uh, in the House, and we will receive confirmation in the next two weeks from Senator Padilla and S Senator Butler. When I do get those numbers, uh, I will share them with you. Subject to any questions, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, any member statements? Seeing none, we will move to closed session. Executive director evaluation. Okay, we are back from closed session, and I guess we'll have the attorney. 
very much. Uh, Jennifer Feige from County Council. Uh, your board returned from closed session and there's no reportable action. Thank you. Thank you. And we, with that, will adjourn. Thank you.